Union. So I give Brexit as an example of a general problem. All throughout Europe, whether it's France with the Front National, or whether it's Germany with the Alternative for Deutschland, or whether it's the governing parties of Poland and Hungary, we have this idea that somewhere back in the past, 1930s and 1940s usually, we were a nation state, and, and perhaps we should go back in that direction. This is a temptation, and in my view, it's a, it's a dangerous temptation. And as I've talked about in Chapter 3 of Road to Unfreedom, as I've talked about elsewhere, the one country that truly understands all this is Russia. And so the way that Russia plays Europe is by appealing to this subjective sense that, yes, there was this comforting past. Perhaps you should go back to this past as a nation state, which is why Russia supported Brexit um, with, with bots and otherwise. It's why Russia supports the Alternative for Deutschland in Germany with bots. It's why, it's why Russia uh, loans money to the Front National in France. And it's why Russia supports, by way of the internet and other means, the forces in Central Europe which are pushing against the European Union. Because the Russians understand just what I'm talking about. They know that the European Union, it doesn't have a history of nation states. They know that it has a history of empires. They know that this is all a trap. And they're pushing Europe back towards what I call the politics of eternity. They're just taking a ball which is already spinning and spinning it just a tiny bit more. As with the United States, what they do is they see a subjective or a psychological weakness inside Europe, which is already there for its own reasons, and they just nudge it in a particular direction. So what does this mean for Europeans or what follows from this? Can I do something besides just criticize? I, I will briefly and then I'll be done. The, the first thing it means for Europeans, and this is very simple, and I've been saying this for 25 years, it would be really good to have a European history for all kinds of reasons, for Europeans to recognize one another, for European leaders when there's a moment of crisis not to fall back on appalling national stereotypes, which is what happens all the time, but finally as a kind of form of political security. If you don't have history, something else rushes in to fill the gap. Something else will, something else, some myth of progress, some myth of doom. So history is a kind of political self-defense. The, the, so why not have a common history? Why not just have European high school students read a book, which is a good book. Since Europe, Europe's politics of inevitability, this notion that everything is always going to be fine because the nation is wise, because that's not true, because the politics of inevitability is never true, you can't count on it, right? It's, it will eventually break. People will eventually become dissatisfied. Their faith in the future will eventually dissipate. That's happening now. You have to have some vision of the future, which appeals especially to the younger generation. You can't just say Europe is going to go on, you know, because we're a wise nation and we learned from the Second World War because A, the young generation doesn't care and B, that was never true in the first place anyway. So you have to have some idea of how Europe is going to be appealing and you have to have some measures like exchange programs, whatever it might be, whereby young people associate their current lives and their future lives, their families, the children they're going to have, the jobs they're going to have with Europe. Not some grand story necessarily, but measures which help people between when they're, say, 15 and 30, think of their lives in, in European terms. And of course, it's encouraging that some European leaders, like Macron, for example, seem to be thinking in those, in those terms. Okay, so thanks, thanks for your patience. What I've been trying to do here is explain how this general shift from inevitability to eternity is indeed general. It's not just about America. It's not just about Russia. It's also about Europe. And also try, try to explain how Europe is threatened and what Europeans might be able to do um, to rescue the good things which integration and the nation state have brought them because those two things go together.